Good afternoon. Thanks to the organizers for having me here. Um, and thank you, Chris, for setting up uh, this series of uh, talks that are really focused around radical empiricism. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about microbes and how we use them to create molecules. And really, this is about going beyond the bounds of human intuition. So there's a big opportunity. And uh, this is really how do we use what's available today to build new uh, novel molecules and materials. So this could span a lot of different areas. We're talking about materials in construction, food ingredients. Uh, we're talking about new drugs, and such as antibiotics or insulin. Uh, we are talking about coatings and different types of materials we use across the board. Uh, so, like Chris mentioned, we are, we, you know, th this kind of this kind of technologies can span many different spaces. We're not focused on one thing. And how do we do this? So, so microbes are being used these days to produce these types of chemicals and materials. I'll explain how a little bit later on the next slide. But some of them we're very familiar with. We can make alcohols, drugs, flavors, null materials, and so on. Here's a little bit of an overview, a summary of the process itself. So you start out with DNA plasmids. This is just a piece of DNA. And then what you do is you put in the genes that you're interested in, that you think are going to result in the molecules and, or materials that you want to build. And then you take that piece of DNA that you've created, the plasmid, and then you insert it back into the microbe. And the microbe does what it does best. It multiplies. It replicates. And we put it in an environment, in uh, fermentation tanks, to enable that replication at a high rate. And then what you do is you purify uh, the content, and then you end up with, for example, insulin, uh, antibiotics, different kinds of materials, whatever it is you're optimizing for. Microbes essentially are a cell factory. They are really great at creating chemicals because they do that anyway. So our job is to perturb the genetic content of the microbes to create uh, whatever it is that we are trying to make. But there is a challenge in this space. Even if we look at the simplest microbe, we're looking at around 3,000 genes. And if you look at the types of, the kinds of perturbations you can make to that, to 3,000 genes, if you just do one at a time, it's fine. But you need to think about two at a time, three at a time, four at a time. And that number increases very rapidly. So this is exactly the concept that our founders believe in. And it's what Zavain talked about in the previous session, and he was actually one of our early investors, is how do we do this completely uh, by trying it out, running lots of experiments instead of making assumptions? So this enables you to look across uh, different parts uh, of the genome, parts that maybe humans wouldn't have thought about, starting at different locations and then basing that basing your next steps on the data that you've generated. So the solution space in biology is enormous. If we think about the number of single DNA or base pair changes that we can make in the human genome alone, we're looking at 3.2 billion base pairs. There's four of them. So that's the kind of number we're looking at. 4 to the power of 3.2 billion. If we think about uh, the genome, the human genome, we've got uh, around 25,000 genes, so we're looking at 10 to the power of that number. This is a huge space, so it's really hard to expect humans to be able to remember these are the kinds of changes and these are the things we should explore. And this is where the concept of a data-driven approach, where you are testing out a lot of different combinations of things, is important. And then a step further. So let's say we've thought about the genetic changes we want to make in the micro. These genetic changes create, so genes encode for enzymes. And then enzymes kick off a series of 
um, chemical reactions, which then result in, the, in different types of chemicals, materials. That whole process is also really complicated, and we don't understand it. This is what it looks like, and this is the parts we understand. So once you've even you know, thought about the genes, then you have to think about the enzymes, then you have to think about the pathways, and then you have to think about the molecules and the materials you're creating. All along that process, there's a lot of big numbers, and there's a lot of different combinations, a lot of things to try and build and learn from, and then do it all over again. And so there is a lot of value in using an existing microbe that makes chemicals anyways, using that infrastructure, the existing capabilities in the microbe, to create new molecules. There are virtues in these molecules um, that we are trying to exploit, because we know that the cell knows how to make them anyway. And oftentimes, they're really hard to make synthetically. So we think that there is a huge opportunity to use the cell's machinery through a data-driven approach with the high-throughput screening methods, combining automation, um, and in addition to machine learning methods, which I'll talk about a little bit later, uh, to build out different types of molecules. So what we've done is we've created a catalog of what we call bioreachables. And these are the molecules that we know we can make through our methodology. So we can make this uh, through the microbes that we've been working with, through the high throughput screening, automation framework, and machine learning. So what kind of machine learning do we do throughout this process? There's a, there are opportunities along this pipeline uh, to deploy machine learning methods. So there is the genetic strain itself where we are um, recommending which, which types of genes to incorporate into the microbe. And then there is the metabolic pathway that results, so the genes encode for the enzymes, and then the enzymes create the metabolic pathway, kick off the reactions, which end up creating that molecule. So there are several opportunities here, and these are the areas where we're, we're deploying machine learning methods. So which genetic changes result in the desired molecules? We've got models that learn from our high throughput screening data, in addition to other data sets, to recommend the next set of changes. What are the metabolic pathways that result in the desired molecules? We look at metabolic pathways that we've seen. Um, we build models that learn from those and then can recommend uh, other pathways moving forward. And then you can use the combinations of these data sets. You can also deploy machine learning on the actual uh, molecule. So you can go from gene to molecule, and then you can go from molecule back to gene in a cyclical way. This is what our machine learning pipeline looks like. Some of this is very generic stuff. We produce a lot of data. We, we build the strains, and then we do high throughput screening of the different microbes with the different types of genetic combinations we've tried out. Lots of data is produced, and therefore we need some of the more classical machine learning uh, usages to do outlier detection, for example, or normalization. This is very important, because then you have to use that data uh, to do your next set of uh, learnings, models, to create the next set of combinations of genes uh, to create your strains. So these are sort of the areas along the way where we're deploying uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence as part of our data-driven process. This is one example of one of our models. Here we've used different combinations of genes uh, to put into a microbe to create a certain product. We're looking for a certain phenotype, for example, yield of a particular molecule. The graph shows that the computer recommendations are doing slightly better than the human recommendations by 4%. This is actually a bit old, this graph. Our models continue to, continue to improve with respect to time as they learn more. But this is what we mean by going beyond the human intuition. We are trying to deploy technology that does things and can think uh, across more combinations and more areas of the genome and pathways than a human might. 
And that's it. Thank you very much.